Uh, how would I describe Peter? He's a terrific mentor. Absolute passion for science. He has more curiosity than any person I've ever met. He's an innovator, he's a teacher. He's an inspiration for every scientist in this country. We are proud to have as our master head of our institution. Back in the 1960s, they developed a number of vaccines. Some people were saying the era of infectious disease is over. We seem to have solved a lot of problems. Uh, we started to see a lot of antibiotic resistance. We've seen antiviral resistance. And we realise that we're in a constant fight with these organisms that's never going to let up. HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, influenza, drug-resistant organisms, all of those infections still cause significant morbidity and mortality across the world. The Doherty Institute's a joint venture of the University of Melbourne and Melbourne Health. The general idea the idea behind this institute is to bring together the academic world of infection and immunity with the practical world of people who are actually dealing with these disease processes in the community. What happens in science is if you get together groups so that they're in the same building and they share the same tea room and they share the same lectures, then you start to get synergies developing. Because you may have somebody who doesn't know anything about a patient but is doing something that's very fundamentally basic, gets a concept and walks down the hall to someone who is thinking fundamentally about disease in a patient, they talk to each other and the next thing you knew, you have a breakthrough concept. And it's fantastic for my laboratory because we collaborate with many of the groups that are coming together and being able to accelerate our research much faster in this brand new exciting institute. HIV AIDS is on the rise in Australia and it's still a devastating disease globally. We have several potential vaccines that are being tested in the laboratory. Our vision is that uh, an AIDS vaccine would be incorporated into the usual childhood vaccines ultimately, and the whole world would get protected against HIV and AIDS. We have a couple of infections around the world at the moment, the Mears virus in the Middle East, Ebola, horrible hemorrhagic disease, which is not being controlled as well as it should have been. But we're going to have to do our best to keep ahead of the game. Influenza is always there. There's always the possibility of a new influenza pandemic and they come in totally without any warning. Often hybrid animal-human influenza viruses to which the global population does not have immunity. And so that virus spreads around the world extremely quickly. We can't predict what they'll look like, but if we had vaccines that were able to recognise the core elements of an influenza virus that are shared between all of them, then we have a chance of really protecting the global population against such a virus. I think drug-resistant bacteria is one of the most difficult and, uh, and really, really quite frightening in some respects. To super bug, bugs that are almost untreatable with antibiotics. Our first seminar here at the Doherty was of a patient that had developed infection with a virus called cytomegalovirus that had a renal transplant. And this had become resistant to all the drugs that we have. We used T cells, which are part of the body's immune system, from another patient and put them into this patient to actually kill the virus successfully instead of an anti antimicrobial agent to actually control the infection. Once that infection is cleared, T cells are capable of remembering that you've had that infection such that if you get infected a second time, they respond much more quickly and much more rapidly to protect you from any damage that that infection might cause. The real focus or detail of my research is really trying to understand how changes in the genomic structure of the cells is altered as they respond to an infection. Each year, about 1.7 billion people suffer from bacterial diarrhoea. The bacteria that I work on, pathogenic E. coli, is a significant cause of that diarrhoea. And we work mostly on trying to understand how the bacteria interact with the host and how the host fights bacterial infection in a very specific way. Here in the Doherty, we have a range of partners who all work towards to see a world that is free of the pain and suffering that tuberculosis causes. We have the statewide reference laboratory for, for TB, partners who are working with uh, genome sequencing of tuberculosis, epidemiologists and mathematical modelers. We work with vulnerable individuals and communities to prevent getting TB in the future. We provide clinical treatment and public health management to help individual people people who have TB to get better.
for hepatitis B in Australia, nearly half of all people living with it, we estimate, haven't even been diagnosed yet. We do uh, translational, epidemiological and public health research, trying to establish the population burden of hepatitis B, but also what evidence there is for the lack of appropriate policy and clinical engagement for people with hepatitis B, and we seek to address that uh, and really have a strong philosophy that epidemiology must direct action as a result to achieve proper public health outcomes. All of our researchers in the Doherty are top level investigators who have numerous collaborations across the city, country and world. We're going to really, really strengthen those on a level of scientific collaboration and most likely internationally. Uh, the Institute is associating uh, research, training, capacity building and also providing services, surveillance of infectious disease and providing services for people that may affect it. That reminds me of very, very much one institute that I know quite well, the Pasteur Institute in Paris. I'm sure that it might be a lot of collaboration in the future between the Pasteur Institute and the Doherty Institute. You usually don't get an institute named after you until you're dead, so it seems to be a bit ahead of the game. Um, I still find it a bit odd, to be quite frank. Uh, it's a great honour and distinction, though I played no particular part in either the design of the institution or the development of it, because I'm now in my 70s and I've always thought that senior scientists should stay out of the way when it comes to the future. One of the ro key roles of the university is, is obviously to bring on that next generation and those young scientists and make new discoveries. Uh, if they want to ask us about what we think or our advice, fine. This is an absolutely unique structure for our country and in fact I think for anywhere that I know about.